<clears throat> Who was that? Sorry. Brian. Brian, okay. Yep. And, and I wrote too, Tom Shanahan. All right. All right. Um, should have everybody that wants to be able to record, have the ability to record. Um, please let me know if you don't have that. I'll let you, I'll get you set up. Uh, if you would use the, uh, use the hand raise feature in the participant tab to ask a question and I'll just kind of bounce around and call on you and I'll unmute you um, to give you the go ahead, ask a question. I'll keep you muted other than that, just so that we don't have any background noise. So. Um, Jack, really appreciate you taking the time today, this morning for you in Australia uh, to, to talk with us, the newly minted pro. So uh, congratulations on that. And uh, we will just open up for questions. So if you have a question for Jack, uh, fire away. Thanks for having me, mate. Hey, always good to have you on here. Uh, we'll go to Jason first. Uh, let's see, let me unmute you. It unmuted me. I unmuted oh, there you go. Yep, it go unmuted ahead. me either one. Yep. There you go. Jack, Jack, thanks for chatting with us. Uh, I wanted to ask you, and this may seem a little strange because I know you probably want to talk about the team in Australia, but a, a few weeks back I saw um, lots of, uh, of social media posts of you being involved in, in some of the uh, Black Lives Matter protests um, around Durham. Can you right. talk to me about, about what motivated you to do that? I know that Nolan's been very involved and, and several of your other – um, you know, coaches sure. and teammates, Coach K, obviously, talk about, you know, your perspective on it as well, especially as an Australian um, and looking at something that's happening that's very American, obviously. Yeah, well, I mean, it's something that I've definitely, uh, you know, learned about over my time in the U.S. especially. Um, you know, my, my girlfriend's um, black, you know, my best friend Javin is black, you know, a lot of people that are very close to me are people of color. Um, and, you know, go through things that, you know, that, that I don't experience, you know, as, as an international uh, person in the U.S. and just as a white person. Um, so, I mean, you know, just obviously seeing, you know, the events that transpired to, you know, kind of come to that point where there were protests and, and everything like that, you know, I really just try to educate myself and um, try to come to, you know, a better level of understanding so I could, um, really just support my friends and people that I care about and in this time, you know, obviously, you know, when you, when you see like, you know, when, when my friend and my girlfriend or, or Javin, for example, you know, saw what happened to um, George Floyd and he's getting killed and, you know, you just feel like that could have been anyone, you know, it's not, it's not just him, you know, it could have been anyone. So, you know, I just kind of, really felt like it was appropriate for me to stand in solidarity as, as did a lot of um, people who weren't people of color, you know, at those protests. Um, so, I mean, you know, I just try to stand for the right thing and what I was raised to believe was right. And that's, you know, that, that everyone should be equal and, you know, no one should, should feel unsafe or, um, you know, at a disadvantage compared to anyone else just because of something that they can't control. Um, so it was a big thing for me to, you know, kind of step up and, you know, understanding that, you know, I have a platform and people look up to me and, you know, I have a pretty strong voice, um, I'd like to think. So, um, you know, for me to be there and um, especially as a white man um, to kind of stand up and acknowledge that, you know, something, something's wrong and, um, you know, and that as a, as a community, you know, we're trying to stand up against it. You know, I thought that was the right thing to do. All right, Steve, go ahead. Yeah, hey Jack. Um, what uh, what's the situation with with the virus there? As far as I, I read a little bit about in Australia that it was kind of getting tamped down, and now it's kind of maybe popping back up again. Do you guys plan on having games with fans? Uh, are you testing a lot. Kind of what's your life like when it comes to that? Yeah, so uh, I mean, Australia was in a a pretty good spot. Um, you know, the the whole virus situation was pretty quiet, and you know, from the start when everything kind of started to ramp up. Um, Australia was pretty strict, strict from the beginning, and I guess that kind of helped us uh, maintain a low level of cases and um, and whatnot. But um, but yeah, now there's been a bit of a surge, you know, especially around Melbourne where I am right now. Um, so cases have been kind of picking up a bit every day. You know, obviously not not to the level that the US, for example, is experiencing, but for what Australia had been 
uh, experiencing, you know, it's definitely on the rise. Um, so Melbourne um, and like one of the surrounding areas is on a is on a lockdown right now, where you can only go out for um, like exercise, essential work, uh, medical stuff, and uh, one other reason that's not coming to me right now. But it's it's pretty strict, and um, actually, as of Thursday, um, if you go out without a mask, then you can uh, get a two hundred dollar fine. So they're really trying to be like pretty strict with um, you know what they enforce. Um, to try and, you know, get this under control and obviously don't want to see it happen in other bigger cities like Sydney and Brisbane and Perth, you know, stuff like that. So really just trying to contain it um, at the moment. It's pretty serious, but, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be able to, you know, go and work out three times a week with, with Melbourne and, um, you know, be able to get in a weight room. But, I mean, other than those workouts, you know, I'm really just laying low in the uh, apartment right now. I'm staying with one of my buddies in the city, so I'm not, driving back and forth between uh, the city and my hometown would probably be the perfect person to spread it out into rural Victoria. So, you know, I'm trying to obviously avoid that. Um, but yeah, right now for me, I'm very lucky that, you know, I can do, I can train and do that because a lot of people don't have the opportunity to do that. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm just trying to lay low and, and do the right thing. It's, it sucks obviously because life's obviously not as normal, but uh you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. I, I could have a lot worse. All right, Mary, go ahead. Uh, Jack, the other day, Coach K called you the best teammate ever. How would you describe your time at Duke and the type of player you were? Um, well, I mean, first of all, that made me feel really good. Um, I'd probably have to disagree with him, actually, though. You know, I, I really think, you know, in my experience, J-Rob was – one of the most selfless and, um, you know, he just cared about you a lot. You know, he was just super selfless and he just really wanted to see you do well. And, you know, I, I got to say, you know, I was just so happy for how his, his stuff finished up and March Madness would have, would have seen a new, a new player, you know, come into light with, uh, with J-Rob, I reckon. But, um, you know, obviously, you know, it was a huge honor for me to, to hear him say that and, um, you know, just to have him to be a uh, part of my career for, for the four years, especially at the stage of his career that he's at. Um, and, you know, be able to be captain twice of his teams and um, just learn from on a daily basis, you know, was, you know, I feel like I'm one of the luckier basketball players on the planet in, in terms of uh, all that stuff. So just to have him, you know, on my side and um, just pushing me every day and just watching him push himself every day. Um, like he's not 72 years old and you know it's just incredible um so yeah to hear those to hear him say that and say those nice words about me um yeah it definitely made me feel good we'll go to jason and then brian so so jack i want to ask you about the unfortunate way that your senior season ended um obviously we now know there was no way, you know, to play games with, with the way the virus is coming on. But talk about what it was like, you know, maybe the 24, 48 hours where, you know, you guys hoped you were going to at least play an ACC tournament and then, then it all went away. And, and also the emotions, uh, you know, of playing for four years and then having it, having it end in an unceremonious kind of way. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a roller coaster. Um, you know, I remember... Uh, you know, we were in uh, Greensboro for, you know, about to start our, our pro season. And, uh, you know, the night before our first game was uh, was when they released the news about Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. And I remember there was kind of two hotel rooms where, you know, our team was split up and, you know, kind of half of us were in one room, half of us were in the other. And we were just on our phones, on Twitter, like checking stuff up, watching the TV as kind of everything un unfolded. And, uh, yeah, it was scary um, because, you know, obviously before that we had gotten news that there was a case in, uh, in Durham County and Wake County, sorry. And, um, you know, it all kind of started to seem a bit more real. And obviously we didn't know what that meant for us in terms of, you know, being able to play basketball and, and everything like that. So, I mean, a whole lot of uncertainty from our end. Um, us captains met with, uh, with the coaches and, and coach. Um, the morning of our first game um, and we just told him that 
we didn't feel like it was right. You know, the game was really the last thing on our minds. You know, we, we all had family um, in Greensboro and, you know, we're really just concerned about their health more than anything. And, you know, just trying to do the right thing as, as things were starting to escalate. Um, but yeah, no, it was definitely a tough time, but I mean, in that moment, you know, it was, it was pretty emotional, you know, just cause we felt like we had everything ripped away from us. And I mean, I'm sure that I'm not going to be the only, I haven't been the only guy that said this around the country, but, you know, I really thought that we had a, a good shot at not only winning that ACC tournament, but the NCAA tournament, um, really thought we were hitting our stride at the right time. And, um, you know, I mentioned J-Rod, but, you know, everything just started to kind of click and come together for us. Um, so to kind of end on that note with, you know, kind of just that lasting thought of what could have been um, is probably the thing that kind of sticks with you the most. Um, but, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, you know, obviously there's a pandemic going on. Um, at the end of the day, you know, basketball can't come first in, in that situation. and you know, the health and safety of, of us and the people we care about and, um, you know, has to come first. So, you know, I took a bit to, you know, kind of let that point of view um, kind of settle and begin to really resonate with us. Um, but, yeah, definitely, you know, obviously just an absurd situation that no one ever saw coming. So um, to have it, you know, just ripped away like that, you know, it's unfortunate. But looking back on it now, you know, it's what had to be done. Go ahead, Brian. Hey, Jack. How you doing today, man? Good, thanks. How about yourself? Not too bad. So how did your uh, your family react to your first pro contract signing? Um, yeah, they were really happy about it. Um, you know, throughout the whole process of me uh, deciding, you know, I really kept them in the loop. Um, <laughs> it was funny, you know, even though I'm 22 years old now, you know, I was still kind of checking in with mom and dad and seeing if they were all good with my decision and, and everything like that but um no they were really happy um you know it's a bit of a bonus that um you know ended up you know the best spot for me was was in melbourne um so you know i'm, I'm about a two-hour drive away from my hometown which haven't been that close to home in, in six years so um you know just it feels a bit weird you know kind of being home for good per se because um, i just haven't had that feeling in in a while uh, so just the opportunity to hang out with my family and friends and stuff, um, you know, when I got back to the country has been good. Um, but yeah, no, they were really happy for me and, um, yeah, no, I'm really happy for where I ended up. All right, Jake, you're up next. Hi, Jack. So you've got quite a new career to look back on now. And now that you've had a couple months to kind of look back and reflect on it. Is there a moment in particular that just stands out above the rest as your favorite? I mean, the things that probably stand out the most is, you know, just those big wins. You know, the, the ACC tournament wins my freshman and uh, junior year um, were huge just because, you know, it's it's all part of the, the group kind of getting that done. And, um, you know, that's, that's probably the thing that I think about the most, actually, is just the different teams and groups that have, being able to be a part on, uh, be able to be a part of, um, and yeah, just just the amazing talent that I've been able to play with and build relationships with. Um, obviously, you know, there's a pretty big turnover each year, so just being able to try and you know have kind of more or less a fresh start and you know bring bringing a team together, you know, it's it's a it's a big thing. But I think you know really grinding to make that happen at the start of each season in the summers, you kind of work your way through. And by the time you get to the postseason, you know, you really feel like a, a tight knit group. Um, so, yeah, really just, I guess, thinking back on that, you know, just the relationships I made with not only the players, but also the coaches and just people around Durham and Duke in general. Um, there's probably the things that stick out to me most. But if I was to, you know, kind of highlight a moment, you know, it's probably those, those big wins where, you know, we bring home a, a trophy and or win a tournament, you know, our kind of hard work feels rewarded. All right, Tom, you're up. Hey, Jack, uh, good to see you. Um, you know, you're always good for a lot of insight, and I wanted to ask you about the uh, name, image, and likeness and how that's coming to college sports. Uh, you have obviously seen some superstars go through the Duke locker room that could have 
really cashed in on it. And then also you've been kind of a role player. And uh, so you so that you're at the other end. And, and that's one criticism about the um, name of the likeness is that it might divide a locker room with some guys making more money than others and maybe boosters will get involved. And, you know, you've, you've had a, quite a perspective over your career. I just wonder what your thoughts are. Yeah, uh, I mean, I haven't really looked into it um, a heap. Um, my initial opinion of it is, you know, it's obviously going to take – a bit of time to be able to implement that into college sports across the board um, and exactly how they decide to, you know, let players profit off their name and likeness. Um, you know, I'm not really sure how they're going to do that. Um, but I mean, if they do work out a way then, and you know, obviously star players are going to obviously get more money or more, ben more benefits compared to, you know, someone like me who's a role player. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, you know, that's more or less life, I guess. You know, if you step into the professional world, you know, not everyone's earning the same amount of money um, and whatever. But I mean, I guess that just kind of comes along with the professional world, which is what people accept. So the thing is, I guess, with college is that, you know, it's always been an amateur um, platform or, or league, or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it's definitely going to be, you know, a bit of a, a change up from how things have been definitely. Um, but, you know, as you said, you know, those star players that really, you know, have the opportunity like a Zion, like an RJ, they have an opportunity to really profit themselves off of what they do. Um, especially if those guys need that profit for their family or whatever it is, and they're entitled to it, then, you know, I think that's fine, but I, I think it's going to be tough to, um, you know, kind of make that happen across the board for all sports, um, at all schools, you know, obviously Duke probably has an advantage in that sense already in terms of players profiting and whether that's going to be somewhat of a recruiting pitch, you know, our school can kind of leverage your brand higher so you can have more of a profit, you know, I'm not sure. Um, so I think, you know, the idea is, is interesting in principle, but in terms of how they're just going to apply it, um, is something that, you know, I'd, I'd probably question a bit more just how they're all going to put it together. All right, Jim, go ahead. Jim Sumner. Hi, Jack. I uh, apologize for the absence of the camera. I don't know what's happening. I uh, just want to talk to you a little bit more about Melbourne, about how this happened. Uh, did you go through an agent who approached who? How you see yourself uh, fitting into Coach Pickleham's system, that sort of thing? Yeah, so... um pretty much straight after the the season was confirmed suspended. And, um, you know, obviously I'm a senior and I was, you know, I knew that the next step was was coming after, after the season and that kind of got obviously pushed forward a bit. Um, so, yeah, I really just tried to start to work through, I guess, that, that agent process and, you know, work out who was kind of the best person to represent me and, what I'm about. Um, so yeah, I signed to uh, Six Sports, um, Agent Samuel uh, Wachowski, uh, which I'm really happy with. And um, I guess from there, you know, I already had, I guess, pretty good relationships with uh, with teams in the NBL and, you know, knowing coaches, you know, it's a pretty tight Nick league. So, um, and especially as an Australian, you know, I was pretty um, familiar with, with all the players and coaches and and everything along those lines. Um, so, I mean, yeah, like teams, once they kind of got their, um, you know, their finances and, um, you know, just kind of got themselves together, you know, they started conversations with me and, and everything like that. You know, I was pretty fortunate that I had every team in the league reach out to me in one way or another. Um, so, yeah, I was pretty fortunate there in terms of my options, but you know, really just thought Melbourne was the best spot for me, you know, regardless of it being one of the closer um, teams to my hometown, and my family. Um, you know, I just really felt like I had to have a good opportunity there to come in. And, um, yeah, I mentioned this to Mike earlier that I don't know if you guys heard it, but, you know, a couple of big re-signings and, and veterans that I'm really excited to learn off um, on the team. Um, and, you know, obviously, you know, Dean Vickerman's a great coach. You know, every time I've come home, 
um, in the summers between college seasons, you know, I've, I've been able to work out with them and they've been very welcoming of me. Um, so, you know, I already had a, um, an existing relationship with, with him as well as, you know, a fair chunk of the players. Um, so, yeah, I really just felt like it all kind of came together pretty well for me and I was pretty lucky. Thank you. Brian, do you have a question or do you still have your hand? No, I do. Okay, go ahead. And then Jason. Sure. So obviously, Jack, coming into Duke, there's a, Duke has like this championship pedigree, as you know, does Melbourne. Is there any pressure that comes with that? I mean, obviously, you felt some pressure with being, you know, a Blue Devil. Is there a similar pressure with being a Tiger? Um, well, we're not even Tigers anymore, mate. We're United. Oh, that's right. We had yeah, whole, yeah, we had the whole rebrand. But uh, I mean, I mean, I guess so. Um, you know, I, I like to, I like to think, you know, with with uh, responsibility comes pressure. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you have a responsibility to win and compete. So there's always going to be pressure with that. Um, but I mean, for me personally, um, in terms of, you know, just kind of feeling that pressure, I think Duke's really prepared me for this next step in terms of, um, you know, learning how to, how to deal with that and maybe making it be, you know, not even something that I really think about. Um, you know, especially when I'm on the court, you know, I really just try to be in that moment um, and just just focus on trying to win. And you don't even have time to really think about, like, the pressure of, I don't know, hitting the shot or, you know, trying to win a championship or trying to be at a certain level um, that you'd expect. Um, so, yeah, for me, you know, I'm just going to try and take it day by day. And, you know, especially now, you know, we got to uh, what is it, July, mid-July. We've got like four months, four and a half months until the season's going to start. So we still have plenty of time before then. Um, and it was actually a question from why I didn't really answer it. But the season as it stands right now is due to start on the 3rd of December. Uh, but that's subject to change. Um, and like in Australia right now, you know, we have um, Australian rules football being played um, in more or less like every state but Victoria, my own where Melbourne is. Um, so they're in like hubs and like, you know, there's not really a lot of fans at games. It's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty under control. Um, but I think, you know, our season, our NBL season being pushed back, um, kind of had the goal of, you know, being that Australia was kind of going to get their stuff together with the coronavirus. We're going to be at a good level. Um, and then at that point, you know, we're going to be able to have fans, um, in arenas, you know, feeling off as kind of normal because um, that's kind of the f main source of revenue for the league and, and teams just because there's, we don't have like a, a TV deal um, or anything like that to make, to make money off. Um, so it's pretty important for the league that, you know, we get people to games and get people in seats and kind of create that atmosphere. And I think that's a good thing, especially for how the league is evolving into you know, getting better players to come back home. We got a new team coming into the league next year. Um, it's just in a in a pretty good spot. Um, but yeah, I can't even wait. What was the main <laughs> kind of substance of your question? Sorry, just was there was there a ton of pressure coming into a team with that sort of championship pedigree? Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, a little bit, but I mean. You know, right now, you don't really feel that a whole lot just because it's so far away from the season. Um, but, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, as a group, you know, we're going to have expectations for ourselves. And, um, you know, already our, our roster is starting to uh, come together pretty well. Um, so, for me, you know, obviously a big goal of mine coming in, I mean, as everyone should be, is, is to win a championship. Um, so, that's definitely going to be in my mind the whole time in terms of goal. Um, but in terms of, you know, putting a lot of pressure on myself, you know, I'll try and stay away from that and just kind of control what I can control and take it day by day. We'll go to Jason and then Jake. Jack, I know that um, this summer has been different from past summers. You haven't been able to hang out with your teammates nearly as much to, to see how guys are progressing and, and becoming better. But I, I wanted you to look ahead if you could. Um, you know, at Jordan's senior year, Joey is a junior, Wendell and Matthew is sophomores. Talk about those returning guys that you know really well and what you think they will accomplish for this team next year. You know, speculate on, on who's going to be the guy to really step up and, and that kind of thing. Damn, I, I love all those guys. They're, they're my boys. Uh, but, man, you know, honestly, I think all of them are about to step up in a big way. 
Um, you know, I've been in touch with all of them. They're all doing really well. Um, and, you know, even got to work out with Joey a bit before I came back to uh, Australia, same with Wendell. Um, but, man, I'm just excited for all of them. You know, we have a great freshman class coming in. Um, you know, come on, man. man. Hey, hey, man, come on. you got to give me a little more than they're all going to do really well. Come on. <laughs> well, man, that's really what I think. Um, I mean, Joey's been grinding. You know, I think Joey's goal is to be one of the best shooter in, in the conference, in the country. And I think, you know, he, he really has a good chance of doing that. You know, just knowing him, you know, he's a workhorse. He's, you know, we all know he's a great shooter. But I think, you know, along with that, I think he's really going to show people that he's expanded other parts of his game. He's spoken to me a lot about really trying to um, up his defense and be known as, as a tough defender, which, you know, is something that, you know, we spoke about even when we were together and we were trying to just kind of push each other in that um, regard to um, just heighten our level of, um, of play. Um, for Jay Gold, I mean, you know, we saw it last year, you know, coming into his own, um, defensively, you know, he's a monster. I think, you know, we all know that, but I know that he's really been working on his offensive game and, you know, his shooting and, um, you know, I'm really excited for him to show more of a complete game on, on both ends. Um, even though we saw glimpses of that um, last year, you know, I think I'm really excited for him to show that it's going to be more of a consistent thing. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for the, the two freshman boys, Matt and Wendell, to come back after getting their first taste of you know, college basketball and I guess come back with a hunger to kind of prove something, you know, getting to that point where the season got shut down and, um, you know, that's going to stick with guys. Um, so I think they're, they're just really excited to come back out and they feel like they have, I mean, all of them feel like they have unfinished business, I guess. And, um, you know, they, they just want to win. Um, so, I mean, honestly, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited for all of them. You know, I really think they're just going to make big, big strides in their own ways. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to tune in and, you know, I mean, hopefully, you know, the season kind of runs as normal or best it can. So we do have the opportunity to see those guys play. Um, but yeah, no, I'm just super excited for all of them. They got heaps, heaps to show. We got Jake and then Rod. Jack, I know this might be the farthest thing from your mind right now. You just signed that three-year contract, but is there any voice in the back of your head saying there's a chance we might see you playing basketball in the U.S. again, possibly in the NBA? Yeah, no question. That's that's always been a goal of mine. Um, you know, I've been fortunate to have a couple interviews already with some NBA teams, and you know, I was hoping to be in uh, in Vegas at the moment doing summer league and all that kind of stuff if COVID wasn't around. Um, just obviously put my put my foot in the door a bit. Um, but yeah, you know, that's definitely a dream of mine. You know, I definitely, I think that just comes with me trying to become the best player I can be. And I feel like in my own mind, you know, if I really try and fulfill my potential, then that's where I belong. Um, along with, you know, I really want to be an Olympian. You know, that's been my childhood dream. You know, if I was an Olympian and an NBA player, I could, and die a happy man, you know? Um, so, you know, I definitely want to make that dream a reality. And um, that's definitely, you know, what I envisioned for my career is ultimately ending up in the NBA. Um, been in saying that, you know, I'm really excited, you know, me and Melbourne both have those mutual goals for me to, you know, come in and improve and be part of a great group. And then, uh, you know, hopefully win a, a championship and, um, you know, make sure I'm ready to kind of take that next step. Um, so, yeah, that's something that I, I really want to tick off the, the bucket list there for sure. Go ahead, Rod. Hey, Jack. Good to see you again, man. Uh, over those four years with Coach K and, and so many different players Jack. what did you learn about leadership in your your career as a two-time captain jack i think it was what did you learn about leadership in the four years your coach oh um yeah sorry i broke up a little bit um 
leadership, well, I mean, what didn't I learn, honestly? Um, you know, first just being around coach um, and even just the coaching staff. I mean, they were all captains of his teams and are all familiar about, you know, what it takes to be a good leader in, in, this, uh, in that team. And as well as that, you know, when I came in as a freshman, you know, with, with Emil and, and Matt Jones and obviously Grayson, you know, they're just those kinds of guys, you know, just great guys to learn from straight away. And they really um, did a good job of taking me under their wing and not only making me just feel welcome to the group, but um, yeah, it just felt like, you know, there was a real place for me and that I could really grow um, within the Duke basketball program. Um, but I mean, you know, just understanding that um, that leadership is is something that you know you can exhibit. You know, even when you don't think you are, and when you are a leader, you know, the things that you kind of don't think about are important. You know, kind of hold more weight than you'd think. Like the little things in terms of just checking in with a teammate after a game, or you know, just playing your ass off at practice. You know, just kind of leading by example. Or, just getting the talk going, getting the atmosphere going, you know, just little things like that. Um, and I think, you know, really just understanding that you can control your environment. That was probably the biggest thing that I learned from coach is that he really, you know, controlled his environment, put himself around really good people and um, constantly reinforced what he believed in and try and, and try to take us, you know, his team with him um, to, on the kind of path of, path of success, if you will. Um, so, I mean, that was something that I really try to emulate, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty verbal person out on the court, you know, I like to talk a lot, but, um, you know, understanding that, you know, you got to have action to, to back that up. And that's really what gives your words substance. Um, and, you know, you, you just got to, you can't expect other people to do what you ask them if you're not doing it yourself. That's probably one of the, the best ways to put it. All right, we'll go to Jim, and we got time for maybe one or two more after that. Uh, Jake, just curious, were you a Melbourne fan growing up? Um, I wouldn't say I was a fan. Um, when they won the championship of, uh, in 2017, 2018, um, you know, I, I, I tuned into that. Um, and, like, obviously at that point, you know, I'd already had a pretty good relationship with, with those guys. Um, in terms of just because of me coming back and working out with them during the, during the summers. Um, but I mean, as well as that, you know, I, I did spend a, a little bit of time with, with cans before I came to college in the NBL. Um, so I was like a, a little bit of a fan of their team as well for giving me that opportunity. But um, yeah, I mean, I was really just a fan of the whole league and different players. You know, I didn't really have like a, like a Melbourne poster on my wall or, anything like that I was kind of just neutral and you know just really enjoyed watching different players in the league that I looked up to and and everything like that um but definitely a fan now <laughs> all right Tom last question hey Jack uh, I don't know if you'll remember this but about halfway through your answer you, you said um, more or less and I don't know if you said lost or a different word I it kind of broke up on me uh, do you do you know the point? Remember what I'm referring to? More or less, and then lost. Uh, I was probably just referring to more or less. You know, I was just pretty neutral on the league. You know, I didn't really have a, a team that I was a fan of per se that I like supported. No, this, that was a question about um, image and likeness. I was asking you how it would go in the locker room, and uh, oh was, yeah. I don't think I, I don't think I properly addressed that. Um, yeah, I mean, it'd definitely be something that guys would have to, you know, in terms of, you know, for example, if you think of our team from not last year, the year before, probably be the best example of it. Like, let's say me and Zion are on, you're in the locker room, right? Like, obviously, his his brand and likeness is at an elevated level compared to mine, right? Um, for someone, for someone like him, I think it kind of all depends on how the uh, individual kind of handles that. Honestly, you know, I think, you know, for someone like Zion, who I know is, you know, one of he's one of the best guys I've ever been around. Um, I don't really think that 
um, would really change his relationship with anyone. I don't think he would outwardly, you know, kind of be dismissive or I don't know the right word. I don't think like someone like him, I think it just depends on the individual, um, to be honest. And I think, you know, as it would, you know, obviously in that professional world where, you know, for him now he's got like, you know, multi-million dollar shoe deals, his contracts, you know, he's got to kind of balance all that. And, you know, and that's the same as an, as an NBA locker room, you know, you have guys coming in on 10 day contracts, you know, are they going to get treated um, differently because they're coming in and, you know, you have guys that are on $40 million a year and he's just, you know, trying to find his way. Um, I think that's just kind of more or less the, the beauty of the sport is that, you know, everyone's kind of running their own race and everyone, you know, kind of have, has different things come to them at different times. Um, but yeah, I mean, to answer the question as directly as I can, you know, I really think it just depends on the individual and how they, how they act and, you know, whether it, whether if, if it is me, am I going to be, you know, salty towards Zion because he's getting all this stuff. Like, you know, that stuff could, could definitely, you know, interfere with, with team chemistry and just the nature of a group. But, um, but again, you know, I think it just all depends on the individuals that you have around you and, um, you know, kind of, how that kind of stuff will get to their head. All right, Jack, anything else for Jack? All right, Jack, certainly appreciate you taking the time. Certainly get, appreciate you getting up early. And thank you to the Melbourne internet. That was no drop offs, which is awesome. Uh, oh, really? No. I'll yeah. tell my uh, housemate that he, he's done a good job. All right, so great seeing you, man. Uh, good luck with the team, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll stay in touch. So. Uh, Thanks, nice question. Man. Come on, right. always and a we'll pleasure. Post, uh, we'll send out the transcript, a couple questions uh, to you guys later on tonight. So thanks for everybody getting on, and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Thank you, Mike and Jack. Appreciate you guys.